isn't life such a beautiful thing? Don't you think? <laughs> if you guys are enjoying this content, don't forget to like this content here. Also, click on the bell. Come on, be a part of the notification. <laughs> today, I didn't know what to do today. Um, literally, guys, I was just looking through comments and somebody said, Quan, you should make fried chicken 2.0. <laughs> I legit thought it was the best comment ever, so shout out to you, my friend. But I got something even better, guys. Walking through the grocery store or the Italian market today, guys, came across some collard greens. Collard greens here in Canada, guys, is very rare. So it's pretty much sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And luckily, I found some collard greens today. So let's do soul food. When's the last time you've eaten soul food, guys? It's been a while. I don't even remember. Let me show you how easy it is to make the best soul food here in Canada from a Vietnamese guy. My twist, my take on it. Don't blink. Let's start off like this. Collard greens, nice, clean, and chopped. I got olive oil here, guys. I know, extra virgin olive oil is not good to cook with. It's only good to put it in salad, but this is the only thing I got, and I do not want to use regular oil. So, don't come at me with that, all right, guys? Don't come at me with that. I'm using extra virgin olive oil because extra virgin olive oil, or any olive oil, is much more healthier than any other oil, in my opinion. So, two tablespoons of this going in. I got one cup of chopped onions here. Guys, I already prepped everything, so everything will go by faster. And it's nice and sauteed. In goes two liters of chicken stock. I got a beautiful ham hock here, which I just scored because I want this to cook faster. Once I got this nice and steaming, I got three bunches of collard greens here, cleaned twice, guys, and chopped. I'm gonna do, toss it into the pool. I don't care if it can swim. Just gotta get in. Don't worry, guys. I think this pot is big enough because this collard green will just cook down. It'll be perfect, guys. So right now, guys, I'm not gonna throw any seasoning just because the ham hock, guys, has a lot of sodium in it. Chicken stock as well, guys, do have a lot of sodium in it. So I'm just gonna let it play out, and in the end, I will season to my liking, all right? Boiling time for this, one hour on a medium-low heat. First protein source of the day, pork neck bone. If you guys have not tried pork neck bone ever before, you guys are missing out. So I got three pounds of pork neck bone here to season. I got some onion powder, one tablespoon of this going in. White pepper, half tablespoon of this going in. Ginger powder, one teaspoon of this going in. One tablespoon of chili powder, half tablespoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of ground thyme, two tablespoon of paprika, and a teaspoon of black pepper, a tablespoon of chicken bouillon, two tablespoon of olive oil, a teaspoon of salt. Guys, I forgot to mention, this was clean wash pork neck bone, guys. There's always this gunk on this bone here, so Make sure you guys clean it, wash it, and just like scrape that stuff out. Get into it, take that beautiful clean hand of yours, and get right into it, guys. Mix this in very well. I'm gonna drop some oil into a frying pan here. Wait for this oil to heat up, guys. I got my instant pot here, and I got a liter of beef stock here, which I'm just gonna fill up. Got some flour here, which I'm just gonna throw two tablespoons in. Whisk this flour in with the stock here. Here we go, guys. Pork neck bone into the pool. I don't care if they can swim. They just have to get in into this beautiful kiddie pool here. <laughs> Pan frying time on each side, one minute. So one minute's up, flip them over. Look how beautiful they are. Nice and crispy. Once they get nice and golden brown, toss them into this pool here, guys. Here's the thing with this right here. I'm not gonna throw the lid on. Reason why? The Instant Pot always overdo it. <laughs> and we still want this meat to kinda like, you know, not fall off the bone. Well, fall off the bone, but still have that nice chew. If I put the lid on, guys, it's gonna tear this thing up, so I don't want that. Somebody say, Quan, why don't you just stew it on top of the stovetop? And you know what? Just, just don't ask questions, guys. Just do it on this, right? <laughs> Here we go, cheddar cornbread. One cup of flour going in. Three quarter cups of cornmeal. Third cup of sugar going in. One tablespoon of bacon powder. One cup of cold milk. One cracked egg. Quarter cup of vegetable oil. Blend that in. Once you got that nice and mixed, all we're gonna do, one cup of cheddar cheese going in. Take your cornmeal mixture, pour into your grease pan. Beautiful mixture in, and we're gonna bake this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 35 minutes. Check out on it at 30 minutes. Mac and cheese time. So I got some boiling water here, or semi-boiling water. Three cups of this macaroni going in. This noodle's complete. Gonna let that drain out nicely. Mac and cheese sauce. So I got two tablespoons of butter here, two tablespoons of flour. Cook this flour in with the butter. One cup of chicken stock. I'm gonna go in with two cups of heavy whipping cream, a teaspoon of white pepper, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, a cup of cheese here. Blend this cheese in. Make sure your flame is off before you guys blend it, alright? So you don't want this to overcook or 
boil over. Okay, let me say this, guys. This broth, or not broth, you know what? I'm gonna say cheese broth might look runny right now, but when it touches the noodles, this cheese broth is gonna soak right into the noodles. You don't believe me? All right, just wait. Just wait and watch, guys. All right, just wait and watch. <laughs> I better not see any comment that says, hey, Quan, that cheese sauce is runny. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna taste it for seasoning. It needs a little more salt, so I'm just gonna add in just a touch, guys. Taste and adjust for your liking, all right? So I just put in half a teaspoon of it. That cheese sauce, moment of silence for this, guys. It's beautiful. Hey, 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 hey. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Hey, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that, all right? I know it's runny, all right? I know it's runny. But just wait, guys. When you mix this in, it'll still look runny, okay? Then I'm gonna bake it, and it's still gonna look runny, okay, okay? <laughs> I just wanna tell you guys, it's still gonna look runny, but when it cools down, that's the part when it starts thickening up. So I got a glass plate here. Pour my mac and cheese on there. Get that good old cheddar cheese on top again. Ding, 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 we got panko here, so. Maybe one cup of panko, two tablespoons of oil in this. One, two. One, two. <laughs> you guys want me to pull out the measuring spoon again? Come on now. You guys gotta believe me. Got that nice and mixed together. Panko crumbs on top. Mac and cheese in for about 10 to 15 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit on the second rack there. Keep an eye on it, guys. One hour's up. Time to chop my pork hock. That's beautiful. Nice and chopped. I'm tossing into my greens here. Some may say, Quan, there's not enough liquids. Guys, there's a lot. If I squeeze it out like this, guys, there's tons of liquid that just comes out. Last thing to this, tasting this for seasoning. So, I'll say it's kind of perfect already. Just my guess, I'm gonna grab everything. That's delicious. If it needs more salt, add more salt. Taste and adjust for your liking. So I just added half a teaspoon in this. Lastly, let's do up some fried chicken. So I got some leftover drumstick here, seven pieces. I'm gonna do half a tablespoon of lorry seasoning. First coating is gonna just be plain white flour. Our wet batter consists of one cup of flour, a tablespoon of lorry seasoning, or lorry seasoning, three cracked eggs, one can of club soda, a seasoning flour. So I'm gonna go to two cups of flour, half a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of lorry seasoning, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of white pepper, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of ground thyme. Mix that up. So I got vegetable oil here heating up at a four or five. Medium high, medium low heat for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I'm gonna stick my chopstick in. Once it bubbles up like this, you know the oil is ready. Take your chicken, put it into plain white flour, shake off any excess, into our batter, shake off any excess, into our flour, then we just pack it in like this, guys. Just pack it in. Take your dunk fried chicken into the pool. Don't care if you think can swim, just have to get in. Cooking time for this, 15 to 16 minutes. 15 to 16 minutes up. Pull out your beautiful fried chicken. Look at that. Isn't that the most beautiful thing ever? I think that's just a little blood clot there. Look at that. Nice and crispy. All right, my family's over, guys. That's why it's so loud. Look at that. So beautiful. Let's do this up, guys. So. One side or one container here. I'm gonna do our pork neck bone. So I got a side of rice here or long grain rice here. I'm gonna set you guys up. I got you guys, all right? You know, I got you guys. Get that beautiful pork neck bone there. How many pieces you guys want? I got the hookups. Three, all right, I got you guys. <laughs> For the sides, got you guys some collard greens. You need a healthy dose of this. What else? Mac and cheese? All right, check out this mac and cheese, guys. It's been baked. Maybe just a, a square piece. Look at that. I 
I told you guys. I told you guys. It soaked up all that goodness. There it is. Nice, healthy serving for you guys. There's a cornbread right there. All right. Look at that. Guys, Southern comfort food made in Canada. What do you guys think? It's just beautiful. All right, next plate, crispy fried chicken. So I'm gonna do a piece of cornbread there, three pieces of fried chicken, extra crispy. You know what? I'm gonna do it like this. Beautiful collard greens. What do you guys think? Not too shabby. <laughs> there it is. This is my home style. Soul food. Good cooking right here. Rate my soul food. Then come through. <laughs> we still got plenty left, guys. Let's get into this. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Let's get in on this mac and cheese here. Shout out to the ones that are saying this was nice and watery. Now it's nice and dry. <laughs> nah, it's not nice and dry. I bet it's so tasty. Guys, take the first bite of this. Mac and cheese, double bake. Quick time, guys. Yeah, it's got it. Nice. Super pumped for this. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what? I never like a panko crust or a bread crust on top of my mac and cheese. Mmm. But this crust right here is legit. Look at that. The most beautiful thing ever. Here's a question, guys. I want to give a big shout out to the South. Or Southern, is it South Carolina? I think it's South Carolina. I want to ask this. Do I have your guys' blessed to open a southern food restaurant here in Canada here? Right, let's take the first bite of this. Quick time. It's got it. Nice. Pop for this. Here, come here. To the naysayers, this might change your mind after this crunch here. I'm pumped for this. Was that crunchy? <laughs> but that's really crunchy. Mmm, 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 mmm. Lori seasoning. Mmm. That's just beautiful. I want to say don't worry about the chicken being black. I think the reason why it's kind of like a darkish red blackish color is because it's frozen. So when I'm reusing this or refrying it, I think the, the blood that was frozen that's in this kind of burnt. My guess. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The most beautiful thing ever. You know, one thing I forgot to make? Sweet tea. Last time I made soul food, a couple of you guys suggested me to make sweet tea. I goofed it there. Next time I make soul food, what is this? Soul food 2.0. Next soul food 2.5. <laughs> I'll make some sweet tea. Mm. All right. Next, let's dip into this collard greens here. Guys, take the first bite of this. It's got it. Nice. I'm pumped for this. That is tender. Mm-hmm. Legit guys, I learned how to cook soul food from you guys. <laughs> That's why I want to thank you guys from all the feedback and suggestion and tips. You guys were the one that sparked my soul food love. Mmm. -hmm. No cornbread. It's not dry guys. Quick time. Quick time. Nice. My cornbread is like a bread. Mmm. Mm. 
with the added cheese in there, that's amazing. It's not dry. I want to say it's more like a muffin, a muffin texture. Mmm. -hmm. Alright, pork neck bone. Quick time guys, suck on this. Quick time, it'll fall off the bone. I promise. Let's got it. Nice. I'm pumped for this. Follow up with some rice. Let's go. Nice. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfectly seasoned. Mmm. -hmm. I never knew there were people besides Asians who love pork neck bone. Asians love pork neck bone. I legit thought I was the one that only discovered it. Because <laughs> a lot of people just use this as broth. The time my mom cooked uh, pork neck bone and pho broth, this was the one I was craving. I was so amazed at how delicious this pork neck bone was. It's like you're getting a rib. But even better. The thing about me guys, if you guys have been watching me for a while, I love meat around the bone. Meat around the bone guys. I want to say it's more sweet. More sweet as in more flavor. Wow. The most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> I gotta try to finish early or just have a few bites here and there because everybody's waiting and everybody's hungry. And I kind of have this, um, is it anticipation? Is that word? Anticipation? <laughs> Sometimes I just like to use words I don't even know. I hear people say it, I'm like, I want to try that word next time. <laughs> That's me. If it doesn't make sense, it's all good. But everybody's waiting for food right now. Nobody wants to be in the film and eat. I just want to hurry up a bit so I can make them some. One more of this. Quick time, guys. I just got it. Nice. I'm pumped for this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oxtail and pork neck bone together. I think that'll be an awesome combination. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. The most beautiful thing ever. Line up oxtail, pork neck bone, and chicken ass together. The best three combination ever. <laughs> I have that on my menu. Mm. I'll call it the three beautiful trio. You get an oxtail, or just one bone with oxtail, you get pork neck bone and two chicken asses. <laughs> now I want you guys to suck on the bone. Get every piece of, get into every single crack or crevice. That's a beautiful thing. And low key I'll be watching you guys. No wasting. I'll call you out 
I'll call y'all if you guys waste it. I'll just be behind the corner like this. Yeah, you better eat that. <laughs> Such a beautiful thing. Holy. Alright, I gotta set them up. There it is, guys. I just hooked them up with an ultimate combo platter. <laughs> Looks legit. Look at that. Looks too good, guys. You guys, come eat! Food and life's such a beautiful thing, don't you think? Hope you guys enjoy this one. Don't forget to subscribe if you have it. Also, don't forget to pick up one of your food and life's beautiful thing shirts or a palm one. Like, share this. Peace out.